I was trying to control my life and I was chasing everything that I thought I wanted. And after getting locked up, you know, God really started working on my heart. Obviously you have to put in the work, but there's a point of surrender that you need to like kind of let go. Because if you try to micromanage everything in your life, you're going to be so stressed out. You're going to have high anxiety. Happy New Year, friends, and welcome back to another episode of Fitz Nation. We're kicking off 2024. I hope your holiday break uh, was well. I hope you had time to enjoy the holidays, Christmas and New Year's or whatever you celebrate with your families and with your friends. Uh, I certainly got to do that. You know, the UFC schedule since we've moved to the ESPN deal has been great from a holiday perspective. We don't have an event around Christmas. We no longer have the New Year's uh, event, so we kind of all get to exhale and reflect on the year that was and get excited about the year coming up. On Fitz Nation, I wanted to start 2024 with Ian Heinish because, of course, people are into New Year's resolutions. Every time the calendar flips, we maybe reevaluate what we're doing well at, what we could improve at, what kind of new behaviors we want to institute to lead to improvement whether it's in our health, physically, mentally, our careers, you know, trying to get that new job, trying to get that promotion this year, this is going to be the year, you know, those kinds of things and those kinds of behaviors. And oftentimes, of course, New Year's resolutions don't stick. It's very easy to be motivated in January to make a big change. But February, March, April, you start falling back into your old habits. And that's why I wanted to have Ian Heinish on the program, because he is a person that has made major changes in his life. And they didn't necessarily come from New Year's resolutions. But you're talking about somebody who was addicted to drugs, who then got into drug trafficking, who then served time in prison, both in Spain and then at Rikers Island in New York City. Hard time, right? The, the, the journey that his life took from being a decorated high school wrestler in Colorado to being in jail for drugs and drug trafficking. And then to kind of be a reborn Christian, finding his faith, and it ultimately led him to carving the path that he's on now as an MMA fighter that made it to the UFC. And he's had to navigate another huge life change dealing with injuries over the past two years and not being able to compete in mixed martial arts. So we talk about what it takes to make a big change in your life and also, you know, sometimes wrapping your head around what life throws at you and how to best deal with it mentally so that you can go forward and make the best decisions for you and for those around you and for what you really need to do to continue thriving in your life, whether it's on the path that you want to be on or on a path that's kind of given to you because of things that you can't control. And I just know for me personally, I have made big changes in my life. They have not stemmed from New Year's resolutions, but they have stemmed from making a, a, a drastic change on a small scale. Don't view what you want to do in 2024 and try to come up with what you're going to accomplish by next December. Instead, view what you want to do in January, right? Sober January, I think, is a popular thing. And that's actually what helped me stop drinking. I just said, I'm not going to drink for January. February, we'll worry about that then. And um, it wasn't like a one and done situation. I never had a drop of alcohol again, but it showed me a new lifestyle and a new life that I can live. And it ultimately led to a big change. So whatever you're trying to change in your life, if you are doing that, I encourage you to start small in terms of a time frame. Don't be afraid of a drastic change, but don't try to just say, I'm never going to do this again in my life. Just say, I'm going to try to live like this for a week or two weeks or a month and then see and reevaluate. So anyways, I hope you enjoy this interview with Ian Heinish. It was great to talk to him. I hope you are thriving through the first week or 10 days of the new year. I'm certainly ready to get back on the mic for the UFC, which I will do this week. But in the meantime, enjoy this episode of Fitz Nation on UFC Fight Pass. Here we go with the UFC veteran Ian Heinish, my good friend. He's on the other end in Florida. Ian, how are you doing, my man? It's good to see your face after all this time. Yeah, man, I appreciate you reaching out. You know, Happy New Year's to you and uh, to everyone listening. And I appreciate you just getting me on the show, man. It's been, a, it's been forever 
I miss seeing everyone at the UFC's face. Obviously, I've been um, inactive, and you know that's a whole story in itself. But yeah, appreciate you having me on. Awesome, man. The reason why I wanted to have Ian on for those of you watching and listening is because obviously in January, everyone wants to know what your New Year's resolution is and what big changes you're going to make. And Ian has done big changes in his life several times over. For those unfamiliar with his story, he was a high school wrestler. Then he got into uh, drugs, really, and, and drug trafficking. And we won't go, forgive me if I'm wrong here, but there was drug trafficking. There was prison time in Spain. There was prison time at Rikers Island in New York. And then uh, ultimately found your path again through your faith, right? Through kind of uh, becoming a Christian. And can you just speak in an overarching sense, Ian, on what it takes and what has allowed you to make big life changes for the better, because that's what it took to ultimately get you on the path to becoming a fighter and really to live the life you're living right now. Yeah. I mean, like you said, my life has taken so many turns and roadblocks and trials and tribulations, even my fighting career right now. Like it's, it's unfortunate. Like I'm in the gym. Like I still feel I can compete if not beat these top guys and guys I used to beat are are accelerating in their career but you know for me it's like 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 brendan said you know i i grew up wrestling and i had this whole plan to go to college and get a degree and ended up getting fully addicted to many drugs like i just fell into that life i was fully addicted to adderall to coke to ecstasy to alcohol marijuana i mean everything and painkillers um, and you know, my life took a big turn. I fled the country. I had felony warrants for trafficking, um, thousand, couple thousand pills, of ecstasy. And it was, um, I was trying to control my life and I was chasing everything that I thought I wanted. And after getting locked up, you know, God really started working on my heart. And when I got out of prison, he put this dream on my heart to, to be a UFC champ. And I went full force into that. Um, dedicated my life to training and turning my body into a weapon in that prison. And when I got out, that's where I got the nickname, the hurricane, similar to Reuben Carter. And uh, I've been on this journey and, you know, I broke into the top 10 and, you know, I was having some really good fights, very close decisions against some of the top guys in the world, Kelvin Gastelum and, you know, small mistakes. I felt like I was just there. I was so new to the sport. I didn't have, you see these young guys come in and they get these build me up fights, guys off contender series. I jumped in with the Wolves. I was in the top 15 on my first fight, my second fight. The only guy I didn't find in the top 15 was Gerald Mearshart. Mm -hmm. And he's a tough vet as well. But, um, you know, I got, the, I got injured and I, and I've overcome being hooked on painkillers and really it was surrendering my life to God and, and not trying to control every little aspect. And obviously you have to put in the work, but there's a point of surrender that you need to like kind of let go because if you try to micromanage everything in your life, you're going to be so stressed out. You're going to have high anxiety and to make that change. Cause there's probably a lot of people out there. Um, what's God putting on your heart first off? What is your passion? What is your why find that out? And then just take it day by day. And just those little things that you don't think matter are some of the things that matter the most. But you need to compound that and be consistent. So, um, you know, I mean, look at my life now. I, I got derailed from my fighting career uh, temporarily, hopefully. Mm -hmm. And I fell into the cryptocurrency world. I'm doing it full time. Like, this is my studio. I stream. I have a YouTube show. Yeah. I have a Twitter show. And I'm supporting my family with that. And it's I never I, I had no idea my life will be where it's at, but I'm rolling with the punches and um, I just have this never quit attitude. And if you can build that and just know whatever you do in life, you're going to be okay because you're that type of person. Mm -hmm. You're battle tested. You're ready to go through the trenches and no matter what it is, and you're ready to dedicate yourself to be great. There's a lot to unpack there. And I agree with all of it. It's very well said in terms of um, you use the word surrender, and I love that word. And I think for people that like to work hard and they want to achieve something like we all want to achieve in our respective areas, but for you, like a UFC champion and what it takes to do that, a lot of people don't think of the word surrender as a positive word. Can you can you explain like why you use that word and, and the value in that kind of feeling and, and putting your life in that uh, in those terms? 
Yeah, absolutely. I mean, the word surrender, especially to like a warrior, sounds, um, you know, like you're being less of a man. But really, if you surrender to a person, maybe you are. But if you surrender to God and really you're like, God, I can't control my life. I can't micromanage. There's so much power in that because you're releasing all the things you can't control into God's hands. And you're just focusing on what you can control. When you release those things, there's a big weight off your off your shoulders. So you're able to focus on the things in front of you that you can control. There's only a few things in this life we can control. Um, so why not put our energy into those things? But we worry about all these scenarios and our past and all these things. And, um, you know, a lot of the things in the Bible are contradictory to the, what the world believes. But giving that full surrender is... The most peaceful thing you can do is the most powerful thing you can do. And uh, letting go of all those little things you can't control. And you say, hey, I want to change my situation. I know these are the steps because I've made my goals and I've made a plan how to get there. So let's work on step by step of the things in front of me that I can control. And all the other noise, I block it out because I've surrendered that. That's in God's hands. I can't control that. But I can control this. So I'm going to work on this. And that will give you a lot more power in those in those moments. And it'll give you a lot more energy to focus on things you can control. Yeah. And then how do you mesh that with the hard work that it takes? I think finding that balancing point is like a big kind of key to just overall happiness, being content with where you are, being um understanding of where you are in your process on whatever journey somebody's on but like the the get up and go make something happen work hard grind rise and grind you know kind of side and then the other side of can't control everything like have you figured that i mean obviously we never figure it out completely right but but have you kind can you explain that in terms i always have trouble kind of figuring out where on the spectrum i want to lie and like where i'm at at any given moment yeah, no, that's that's a great question. It's it's kind of like for me, it, you're always going to do something or think about something like especially like for me, I have that real drug addict, addictive personality. So that's what made me so good at fighting, because a lot of people don't want to drill over and over. What do drug addicts do? They do the same thing over and over and over. And so I just focus that attention, that addictive personality, which I believe I'm fully healed by Christ from my addictions from above because it has to you have to change in here and it has to come from up there but i still have those tendencies to like do the same things over and over i'm a creature of habit most people are so what are you focusing on are you waking up and you want to change your goals and you're just scrolling and looking at maybe a hobby or something that you know like discipline is so key because if you're looking and wasting your time it's you can go down the line First off, what are you putting in your brain? Are you just scrolling mindlessly and just liking pictures and blah, blah, blah? Or are you like, hey, I want to get better at this, so I'm going to do my research. You have YouTube University. When you're driving, stop listening to music. Listen to a YouTube thing. How can you educate yourself to be to attack whatever you want to do better? So there, you, there's no excuse there. You don't need to go to college. YouTube has everything. And are you listening to podcasts? Are you putting garbage music in your brain? And then what are the people you're surrounding yourself with? Are these people chasing their goals or are they just chilling and complaining and have this victim mentality? So not only um, when I want to change, I first thing I do when I want to change and I want to get my life on track is I clean everything. Because when you clean your car, when you clean your room, when you clean your house, when you clean your apartment, now you have a... a space in your brain there's not clutter everywhere. yes and the second thing i do is i work out because that gives that nervous energy out that brings that anxiety and then i and, I and i'm planning this the day before because if i don't have a plan like today i even got caught i was like do i want to go fishing do i want to do crypto i was like no man like make a plan for yourself especially you uh entrepreneurs you're you're now you're making everyone says i want to make my own schedule well you need to make your own schedule or you're just going to be all over the place and get nothing done so um i'm all over the place with this answer but in short surround yourself with people that not only support your goal and support the new you if they if they're if they're con confronting you like with and treating you like you're your old self you need to get rid of them or you need to create boundaries 
Second, fill your brain with stuff that can uh, help better you for your goals. And then thirdly, it's, um, you know, it's just making that discipline, making that schedule for yourself. When I wake up, I'm going to hit the gym, then I'm going to um, educate myself. I'm going to get in the word and then I'm going to go up upon my day. And if you get in this routine, routines are so important and you do this over and over and over, you're going to climb the ladder. Yeah. You're going to climb the ladder of a success and bring it to your goals. Yeah. Something that I saw recently on YouTube, because I'm with you on YouTube university is a great term. Um, it's like, just beware of your algorithms. Like if you're making any sort of change or if you just want to improve your, like beware of your algorithms, cause it'll show you something that you compare yourself to. It'll show you something that is like kind of toxic, but it's tough to look away from. Like I've really stopped going on Twitter cause Twitter became this thing where I don't know if you go on Twitter very often and, and scroll, but it became this thing where it was like stressful videos. Like it was just like a lot of like, extreme kind of like street fight videos or like, oh, look at this accent. I was just like, why? I don't follow any of these, but it's, just, it, you know, it's popular because it's tough to look away from that sort of stuff. So it gets clicks and comments and whatever. And it's really like the most poisonous stuff for us gets a lot of attention. And uh, man, to rinse yourself of that is something that this break from the UFC schedule has allowed me to do because we haven't had events for a while. So it's like been off of it for a bit. And I'm like, man, this is like, it's, you're just clear without even thinking about it. You know, you're just, you're just way more clear headed. Um, so can we get into, uh, before we started recording, you kind of told me how you were in a dark place a little bit and you've obviously been out of action for a long time. July of 2021 was when Ian last fought. Um, and can you just get into, um, if you want to call it retirement, but like, you know, the status of where you're at right now and kind of the, the dark things that you've had to battle through mentally and also the, the journey and the hope to getting back to fighting in the UFC, I would imagine that, that you kind of hinted at, um, like what, what you've kind of gone through and where you are in the process right now. Hey, thanks for checking out Fitz Nation and my YouTube channel. If you want the full episode of this podcast, you can watch it on UFC Fight Pass. There's a link in the description below, or you can sign on to UFC Fight Pass and search Fitz Nation.